Bike setup depends heavily on personal preference, but in this video we'll give you some basic tips to find a good starting point for what works best for you. Seat height. Seat height is critical to maximizing your power, efficiency, and comfort on the bike. More importantly, proper seat height can prevent long-term injuries. Running your saddle too high can lead to discomfort in the perennial area, back, reduced efficiency, and pain in the back of the knee. Running your seat too low also reduces efficiency and can cause knee damage, reduce flexibility in the hips, and back pain. The optimal seat height is when your knee is bent at a 30 degree angle at the bottom of the pedal stroke. With the side of your knee as a pivot point, measure the angle between the top of your femur and your ankle bone. If you don't have an angle iron handy, there's a quick way to get close to the proper seat height. Spin the pedals backwards with your heel bisecting the spindle. At the bottom of the pedal stroke, your knee should be completely locked out, but you should not have to shift your hips side to side to reach the pedals. This will set you relatively close to the proper seat height and you can make small adjustments from there. Bar position. The rotation of the handlebars within the stem has a huge effect on bike handling. Many bar and stem combinations will have guide marks so that you can quickly select the bar angle you're most comfortable with. As with all other setup tips, it's best to stay away from the extremes. Having your bars too far back can contribute to bad form and also hurt your wrists. Adjusting the handlebars too far forward will negatively affect the bike's handling by putting too much weight on the front wheel. Lining your bars up so that they are perpendicular with the ground is a great starting point. From there, you can make small adjustments forward or back until you find the right position for you. Brake lever position. Lever position may seem like a minor adjustment, but it can have a huge effect on your riding. The angle of the lever in relation to the bar influences your body position on the bike. Angling your levers too low can put too much weight on the front wheel leading to washouts and crashes. If your levers are too high, it can injure your wrists on jumps or drops. A neutral position, roughly 45 degree angle to the bar, is a good place to start. Modern brakes are designed to be modulated with one finger, so adjusting your lever to where your finger sits in the pocket at the end of a lever will provide maximum braking power and performance. Tire pressure. Tire pressure is influenced by multiple factors, such as tire selection, riding conditions, riding style, and whether your wheels are set up tubeless or not. If you ride very aggressively, higher tire pressure can prevent rim dings, pinch flats, and tire burps. If you ride less aggressively, lowering your tire pressure can improve your traction and overall ride quality. In high traction conditions, you can run a higher tire pressure, which allows for less rolling resistance. In low traction conditions, a lower tire pressure will help you find grip. Tires with a stiffer sidewall allow you to run a lower tire pressure, while tires with less structure require a higher tire pressure. Tubeless allows you to run a lower tire pressure for increased traction with much less chance of flatting. If you have tubes, a higher tire pressure is required because you're susceptible to pinch flats. As a starting point, the range for tubeless tires is 25 to 35 psi, and 35 psi or higher for tires with a tube. Typically, you'll want two to three PSI higher in the rear tire because it takes more hits than the front. Suspension air pressure. Most modern mountain bikes come equipped with an air fork and shock. The amount of air pressure in your fork and shock will determine how your bike absorbs bumps and obstacles along with how it handles on the trail. Most suspension manufacturers will have a chart for a suggested air pressure for your weight. The first step to dialing in proper air pressure is checking your sag. SAG refers to how much your suspension compresses under the weight of the rider. We recommend running between 20 and 30% SAG in your fork and shock. To achieve more SAG, use a shock pump to release air from the fork or shock. For less SAG, you will pump air into the shock or fork with the shock pump. Remember, you will lose roughly 10 PSI when you unscrew the pump from the valve, so you'll need to compensate for this. Whether you're taking your buddy's bike out for a rip or setting up your brand new bike, these tips will help you feel more comfortable and confident. Don't be afraid to fine tune these adjustments and find out what works best for you. A properly set up bike can make all the difference. So grab your bike, grab your tools, and hit the trails. For more videos on setup and maintenance, check out artcyclery.com.